are INFJs rational? You know, that is a very interesting question uh, because INFJs, as you know, are considered to be logical feelers, the most logical of the feelers. I mean, a lot of people consider INFJs to be the most logical of the feelers. In fact, I think there is something intuitively, intuitively true about this. Interestingly, I don't think that they are necessarily the most rational of the feelers. So perhaps you think that there's a conundrum here in the sense that um, the, the quality of being logical would then have to be different from the quality of being rational. And I think it's true. If you, if you like, um, think of, think of um, being logical as the ability to make uh, correct deductive inferences or correct inferences in general, right? You have a particular proposition. If you're able to move from that proposition to the next one in a way that is veridical, in a way that preserves its truth, um, then you're logical. And I think INFJs often, when they have well-developed TI, are pretty logical in that way. To be rational is something different. To be rational is usually a mode of reasoning or a mode of relate, relating to the world that is based on um, the ability to have a particular body of data to begin with and use that body of data to make particular decisions or to orient themselves in a particular way, you know, um, toward a particular destination in a way that is predictable, repeatable and replicable. Um, from this perspective, I think, for example, uh, ENFJs are probably more rational than INFJs. It's not that INFJs are less rational in the sense they're not capable of rationality, but it's often that I think INFJs are quite wary of reducing the meaning of the world and the meaning of intersubjective relationships simply in terms of rationality. You know, there's this notion that uh, used to be quite prominent among philosophers in the past where it, it was enough to have rational grounds for doing something to want to do that thing. But in fact, if you just have a rational explanation of why you should do something that is not sufficient to do the thing, you, used, you need to have the intervention of what's called volition or will. And INFJs and INTJs, in fact, too, uh, whether Nietzsche, for example, is an INFJ or an INTJ, you know, you, we could debate that. People usually think he's an INTJ, but he certainly is a philosopher of will. And will is precisely what, is, what, what comes on top of rationality, something that transcends and something that comes from the inner self in many ways, something that comes from, well, something that is articulated and has tended to be articulated within the deep recess of the NI world of INFJs and INTJs. Of course, will concerns all of us. It's not just an NI phenomenon, but the ability to have a profound perspective on the me mechanisms of will, uh, I think is often tied to the possession of the NI function and often some misunderstandings between highly rational types like INTPs, ENTPs, ISTPs and INFJs is that the very rational types tend to underestimate the role of non-rational processes in life. And that includes will and includes meaning and includes many other things. And you could actually argue that if, you, if uh, Freud was a T-type, uh, perhaps most of the disagreements that he had with Jung, the basic source was that he was a much more rational type. There's often a, a connection between a, a, a high premium on rationality and reductionism. You see that in uh, Freud, but you also see that, well, I mean, perhaps push to uh, sometimes a parody in its, in its extremities with Richard Dawkins. You know, everything has to be reduced to smaller components. Everything needs to have a cause. Otherwise, it's not worth talking about. Imagine how many Jungian concepts cannot be talked about in that way. How many Nietzschean concepts can be, cannot be talked about in that way. How many religious phenomena? I mean, that's in a sense, religion is precisely a form of answering the need for non-rational explanation. And religious thinkers or religious people who tend to want to defend religion or provide apologetics for religion purely in terms of rational justification, usually 
you know, uh, they fall short of really addressing what's really at stake in the need for the religious or the need for the spiritual. It is precisely what transcends rationality. So again, INFJs capable of being rational, but they don't tend to prioritize rationality in all situations because they think that rationality, if pushed too far, if considered to have overall dominion on life and the meaning of life, uh, impoverishes life, misses something crucial about life, and that is meaning. I mean, I think that the, the core concept here that we need to keep in mind is meaning. Meaning is impossible to remove from the world. And no matter you know, how long you try to provide a purely rational account of the phenomenon of meaning and meaningfulness and values <coughs> and purpose, you'll never be able to, to, to just reduce it down to pure rationality. This is something that INFJs are very, very intimately connected to. And I think it has a strong basis in their direct access to the NI world. If you want to hear more about meaning and about the role of meaning in INFJ life, more on these questions, my new book, The Infinite Soul, really goes deep in discussing these. It's called INFJ Life in the Modern World, and it discusses how INFJs explore meaning, find meaning, purpose, and value in a way that is in a world, especially the modern world, the hyper-rational modern world that is often seen as hostile to INFJs. So if you got the book, loved it, but haven't reviewed it, please consider reviewing it. There's another book I wrote in the past called, well, you know, a prequel to The Infinite Soul. A few years ago, The Ecstatic Soul, that looks at the depth of INFJ consciousness and its existential manifestations. Check the reviews, there's lots of them. You can get that too. And don't forget, as usual, uh, my channel is still going thanks to my the support I get uh, from generous people on Patreon, particularly all one-off PayPal, PayPal donations. There's both links below. If you support me on Patreon, you will get to have access to some bonus content. Content You can interact with me directly. And uh, we do some, you know, young readings as well. There's a little community that's growing there. And again, it's the lifeblood of the, uh, lifeblood of the channel from three and a half dollars a month. So please consider it. I'll talk to you next time, guys. Bye-bye.